In this video, we will talk about and give you my full review on the Poco M3's big brother, the Poco M3 Pro 5G. What's up guys, James here, refresh from my short break, and this is Tech Emilio. Last month, Poco announced the Poco M3 Pro 5G and shocked us with the phone that has a 5G capability at a much lower price point than its competitors. But aside from 5G, could this be a standout phone too? Or is the Pro naming just a gimmick? But before we jump to the review, I make tech content every week on the channel. And if you enjoyed this video, I appreciate if you click that like button and the subscribe button too to get you notified when there's a new video that comes out. You can follow me on my social media accounts as well at TechMNO. And we still have an ongoing giveaway that you can check out right here or in the description box below. Now let's get to our quick unboxing and full review. Here's the retail packaging of the Poco M3 Pro 5G. We get the 6GB RAM with 128GB of onboard storage here. And the color that we have is in power black. A quick rundown of the contents of the box, you get the phone, a free jelly case, SIM checker tool, stickers, some paperwork, a USB-C charging cable, and finally a 22.5W power adapter. Now, on to our review. Let's start with the build. If you're asking if this is just like the Redmi Note 10 5G design-wise, well, um, you're right. Actually, some specs and features here are really the same between both phones. For real Xiaomi, the M3 Pro's frame and back is made from polycarbonate plastic, but Poco decided to put it with a glossy finish that mimics glass with a Poco branding on the side with accents. While it can deceive your eyes that the back is real glass, this could mean two things. Fingerprint and smudge galore. The color I have here is in power black that looks like ash gray in my honest opinion, but you can get it this on cool blue and poco yellow. But I suggest getting the yellow color if you don't want to see scratches and fingerprints. The M3 Pro's IPS display is good, especially at night, but it's a different story when you're outdoors, even if I kick on the sunlight mode. Watching videos on the display is good, especially on YouTube, part thanks to its 90Hz refresh rate screen. It also supports Widevine L1 for HD content on Netflix, though it doesn't support HDR certification. The Poco M3 Pro has the usual things we can see in lower mid-range phones of Xiaomi nowadays like 3.5mm headphone jack, USB-C port, and IR blaster. Side note, the audio jack has a high-res audio support and it's good but not blowing your mind great, which is understandable. Two great features on the Poco M3 that are shockingly missing on the Pro models are the hybrid SIM tray, rather than a triple card slot, and stereo speakers in favor of a single downward firing one which is quite disappointing. The side mounted fingerprint scanner that's embedded on the power button is responsive but in my testing it's having a hard time to register my fingerprint on the scanner and it's not quite fast on lock. Maybe because of the animations. Hmm. The Poco M3 Pro 5G is rocking the Dimensity 700 5G processor by MediaTek. While in other countries, the phones with this chip already exist in the market, in the Philippines though, this might be the first Xiaomi slash Poco smartphone with this kind of processor that is quite equivalent with the Snapdragon 730 non-G processor. The M3 Pro has two configurations now, namely the 4GB RAM 64GB storage and the 6GB 128GB storage which I have right now. While 4GB is good, if you're buying a phone and you're a heavy user in mind, get the 6GB instead to cater to your needs. Gaming performance of this phone is good like in some casual games like Autos Adventure, Sonic Dash 2, and Super Mario Run that is smooth and it also supports 90Hz mode if turned on. But don't expect high to ultra settings in some heavy titles like Asphalt 9 which is playable in performance mode but has some noticeable hiccups on my testing. Other games though like Call of Duty Mobile, PUBG Mobile, and League of Legends Wild Rift, the default mode is only on medium. 
You can play it in high settings though, but expect ample amounts of lag. Aside from the things I've noticed on its game performance, I've experienced something on my two days of this device, and it's on the MT Pro's refresh rate screen. On those two days, the 90Hz refresh rate mode is struggling to scroll smoothly, but when it switched back to 60 and it's normal now, and in some cases, it's much better than the 90Hz. Yeah, weird. Don't get me wrong, I already experienced and saw 90 and even 120Hz screens on iPad Pros and even Samsung Galaxies and Oppo phones. The possible scenario here is the heaviness of the MIUI skin which is in version 12.0.8 on top of Android 11 or some bug on my review phone in my review period. But good news, I tried to reformat the phone after that incident and it works smoothly now and it goes back to normal. So if you experience this also on your phone, please let me know in the comment section if this is a real issue or just an isolated case. While the Wi-Fi connection of this phone has a typical to standard results as shown here, one of the key selling points of the POCO MP Pro with Dimensity processor is the addition of 5G connection. This is currently the most affordable 5G smartphone in the market right now. And shockingly and luckily, our area has 5G. With a Sun Smart 5G ready sim, I can get from a usual speed of around 50 to 65 Mbps down and around 30 to 40 Mbps up with a little bit of wall and large object intrusions to a staggering 130 to 160 Mbps down and up to 70 Mbps up when I'm outside. But when I'm inside my kitchen area, it goes down to LTE plus with an average speed of around 42 to 50 Mbps down and around 10 to 16 Mbps up. But the results may vary depending on your location and if you're near or far the cell sites. The cameras on the POCO M3 Pro are uninspiring at best, but it's understandable that this isn't POCO's focus on their smartphone. With that said, however, you can get the same stuff of triple card setup, which actually only one lens is really usable. Um. Okay, relax. Okay, okay, okay. Okay. That contains a 48 megapixel camera and a dual 2 megapixel lens for macro and depth. It uses the Omnivision lens here rather than a Samsung lens, and the results are great. I'm not good at color science, but when I tried to compare it to its younger sibling, the MP Pro had better results. Than the other one. While low light night mode shots can be acceptable at best, but for super low light mode, you will not go there deeply. Okay, selfies are taken with an 8 megapixel camera, and I could say that these are great in this price range. Here are some sample shots. On the video side of things, both the 48 megapixel camera and the selfie cam can record up to 1080p videos at 30 frames per second. And here's a sample recording of the POCO M3 Pro 5G and its selfie camera and the maximum resolution of here is 1080p at 30 frames per second. So I'm not using any tripods in here on monopods, I'm just using my hand and there's no included microphone here, I'm just using the onboard microphone of the smartphone. So what do you think about the output of this video? Let me know your thoughts on the comment section down below and let's talk about that. And finally, the charging of the M3 Pro's 5000 mAh battery is quite long, clocking in at more or less than 2 hours, which is almost not fast in this category since the other phones from Xiaomi like the Redmi Note 10 have 33 watts while this only supports 18 watts. And again, 22.5 watt charger is included. Oh god, Pogo, why? Why? Why 18 watts only? <sighs> oh well, better have fast charging than having none. <sighs> with a charging short comes the saving grace with its superior battery life. Casual to moderate users can squeeze this phone's battery for more than one day. While for heavy users, especially if you will use this for gaming, screen on time can usually take around 6 to 8 hours regardless if the screen is on 90Hz or 60 However, it will still depend if you're using data or Wi-Fi. Now, after I break it down all of the things that I experienced on this phone, the million dollar question now or should I say a thousand peso question is, 
The Poco M3 Pro is the phone that you need it right now? Hmm. For my final thoughts, I will use the slogan of this Poco M3 phone, more speed, more everything. Yes, they nailed the speed part here. The processor is good for heavy users plus multitaskers, and it's respectable to heavy gamers if you're okay with the medium graphics settings. 5G speeds are really fast here for its price range if it's available in your area now, and having a 90Hz screen is a welcome addition too. But in the more everything part, in my honest opinion, it should be almost everything. While there's some things in this phone that are present like the headphone jack, micro SD card support, just to name a few, other things like 4K resolution on a rear camera, a better GPU on the processor, triple card tray support, ultra wide camera, a better screen quality, and even a stereo speaker setup that the standard M3 has is missing here. So if you're looking for a better performance, camera, screen, or much faster charging, it also included the speaker setup, I would suggest the Redmi Note 10S, Redmi Note 10 Pro, the Poco X3, and the X3 Pro. But you will shell out a little bit more of your money there. With that said, however, be before you comment negatively below, okay, okay, relax, 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 relax. My critical criticism somewhat disappeared when I look at the price. At less than 9,000 pesos or 200 euros for the base model, the Poco M3 Pro is still a good buy for those people who have a tight budget but still want a powerful performance that caters to their daily needs and preferences. And if you want to watch my other review videos, you can check the playlist right here or my latest video right here. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel as well. Again, my name is James and I'll see you guys on the next one.